Moin and welcome. Hello and welcome. This podcast is for motivated people who want to improve their Luxembourgish vocabulary, listening skills and fluency by listening to compelling content. I'm Anne, your dedicated host and the driving force behind Luxembourgish with Anne, with a true passion for teaching my mother tongue since 2012. In this dynamic podcast, I'll share with you interesting short vocabulary lessons and topic conversations from level A1 to B1, and together we will build a strong foundation of the language you need to speak with confidence about everyday life topics. I also share exclusive learning strategies and insights for the Spruchentest oral exam. So join me on this exciting Luxembourgish learning journey. Bas du Prat, are you ready? Moin, am heiast episode Nummer 48. In the last episode, we covered the three key rules for word order in Luxembourgish independent clauses. Do you remember these three important rules? Let's recap those. So the first rule was that the verb is the boss in a sentence. So the verb always wants to be the second element in a Luxembourgish simple sentence. For example, you can say, Ösch leeren haut Lützeboyesch. Doch leeren comes after the subject. But you can also start with haut, but your verb will still stay second element. Haut leeren Ösch Lützeboyesch. The second rule was that Luxembourgish sentences are Time, manner, place. So always time first, followed by manner and then place. Zum Beispiel, ösch fuhren um Erdauer moyes mamauto obdabes. And then we saw that uh, with separable verbs or modal verbs and uh, in the past tense, the second verb goes last, but the conjugated verb is still the second element. So, um, now, in this episode, we will dive into dependent or subordinate clauses. Now, I hear you asking, but what does that mean? <laughs> so, subordinate clauses are those parts of a sentence that can't stand alone. So, they cannot stand alone and need another part to complete their meaning. These clauses bring a new set of word order rules in Luxembourgish. And here is already one important tip. The conjugated verb is always placed at the end of a subordinate clause. Okay? Are you curious to learn more? Then tune in to master these more advanced sentence structures. Pass to Prat? Dann lass. So, how do you recognize a subordinate clause? Well, a subordinate clause is introduced by a subordinating conjunction. For example, wann, meaning when or if, well meaning because, that, meaning that, uh, op, meaning if. Okay, these are all um, words introducing a subordinate clause. Don't wann, well, op, dat. Okay, or in the case of a relative clause, it will be introduced by a relative pronoun, for example, den, they, that. But I think it's time now to have some examples. Beispiel ain't. If you want to say, I don't know if he comes together or I don't know whether he comes today. So you have a first part is, I don't know. This is, ösch weiß nicht. Ösch weiß nicht. And then, if he comes today, this is your subordinate clause. And this will be in Luxembourgish, ob hien haut könnt. Ob hien haut könnt. So you see that, or you hear, that the subordinate conjunction ob is followed by the subject hien, and that the conjugated verb comes at the end könnt. Okay, könnt is the conjugated form of kommen, hien könnt. Yeah? A schwiederholende ganze Satz. A schwiss nicht, ob hien haut könnt. Or you could have started with the subordinate clause. You could have started with Ob hien haut könnt, wie sie schnitt. Okay? Um, B. I don't go to the swimming pool today because I am sick. Now try to translate this into Luxembourg. So I don't go to the swimming pool today is the first part of your sentence. 
So this is a skin haut net an schwamm. Okay. And then the subordinate clause is because I am sick. And that does. Weil ich krank sin. Okay. Weil ich krank sin. Sin comes at the end. Hm? Ich wiederhole den ganzen Satz. Ich kann halt nicht an Schwamm, weil ich krank bin. A next sentence. Try to translate it. That's the man whom we saw yesterday. Or that we saw yesterday. That's the man. That was the man. That we saw yesterday. De mir gestor gesin hun. Okay, so den, meaning that, uh, this is the relative uh, pronoun relating to the mum. Huh? That is the mum, den, mir gestor gesin hun. This is a sentence in the past, so we have the auxiliary verb hun, which comes at the very end, and then gesin comes just before, but the two verbs come at the end of the sentence. That is the mum, de mir gestor gesin hun. And the last sentence, how would you say, if the weather is good, I'll go running. That's easy. If the weather is good is, wann dwierder schein as. Okay, so wann, followed by the subject dwierder, and your verb at the end, schein as. I'll go running, ginnisch laufen. You could always also have started your sentence, I'll go running, if the weather is good. How would you have um, said the sentence? So, I'll go running is, ich kann laufen, if the weather is good, wann wird das schön aus, this stays the same. Yeah. Now, as you could hear, a Luxembourgish subordinate clause always starts with a subordinating conjunction and ends with the conjugated verb. Now, the one thing you must remember is that when a sentence starts with a subordinate clause, like Wand wird der Schein as, the very first word after the comma, because here we put the comma, Wand wird der Schein as, comma, so the very first word after this comma must be the verb, okay? So, Wand wird der Schein as, comma, Ginnisch laufen. This is the famous verb, comma, verb rule. When your sentence starts with a subordinating conjunction, just like wann, well. Okay. So, one important aspect of learning to deal with these subordinate clauses is to be familiar, of course, with the subordinating conjunctions that introduce them. So, all of the subordinating conjunctions require the conjugated verb to go at the end of the clause. Um, I repeat this because this is very important if you want to sound more like a natural speaker. Now, I am happy to share now my learning tips. So, another technique for learning conjunctions is to learn the ones that are not subordinating, called coordinating conjunctions, since there are fewer of those. So, the coordinating conjunctions with normal word order, there are only four. Uh, this is ava, meaning but, or a synonym is be, uh, me, me, so ava or me. And then oder, meaning or, an, meaning and, of course, and then the entweder oder, meaning either or. Okay, so these four are coordinating conjunctions. Aber me, oder, entweder oder, an. And here the word order stays the same. Okay, for example, if you want to say my parents were also at the movies, but I didn't see them. Okay, so the first part of the sentence is my parents were also at the movies. Meng ältere waren auch am Kino, but I didn't see them. Aber ich habe sie nicht gesehen. Okay, so aber followed by the subject ösch and then the verb, your first verb, hun, sie nicht gesin. This is a sentence in the past. So you have first your auxiliary verb hun and then your past participle at the end. Meng Eltern waren auch am Kino, aber ösch hu sie nicht gesin. Another example with oder. You can give me the money straight away or 
you can pay later. So you can give me the money straight away is du kannst mir zuen direkt gehen oder du bezielst dono. Du kannst mir zuen direkt gehen oder followed by the subject du and then the verb oder du bezielst dono. Bezielst is the conjugated form of the verb bezuelen, bezuelen, to pay. It's an irregular verb. A last example. How would you say either you wait for us here or you come with us? This is the either or, this entweder oder. So either you wait for us here is entweder du wärts high up eyes oder du gehst matt. Okay, so entweder du wärts high up eyes, normal sentence order, entweder then your subject and then your verb, entweder du wärts high up eyes oder du gehst matt. And now comes the last example because we need to do a sentence with am. Um. For example, how would you say, uh, first of all, do you know how to say a slice of bread? Hopefully you remember that this is ein schmier. Ein schmier. Uh, yes, so how would you say I eat a slice of bread in the morning and to that I drink tea? So remember that in Luxembourgish the time becomes before comes before anything else. So you have to say Eugiesse Moyes and Schmier. Eugiesse Moyes, Moyes is the time, and Schmier. And to that I drink tea. This is Anush drinken Dubai tea. Okay? Dom Eugiesse Moyes and Schmier, Anush drinken Dubai tea. Now I have something to say here. No, after an. The subject by ösch, hmm? and if it remains the same, can often be omitted uh, in the second part because it is understood. So the verb will then come after the conjunction here. Dom ösch ist moje sein schmier am trinken dabei te. So in such a sentence, you don't need to repeat the subject after an oder oder. Ösch ist moje sein schmier oder a yogurt, for example. So, an lo üben mir. Okay, so it's time to practice. I will say three sentences in Luxembourgish and uh, you will have to find out the conjunction. Satz int. Dat sind Kanna, de hai an der Stroß wunnen. Dat sind Kanna, de hai an der Stroß wunnen. Hopefully you've heard they Day, okay, and is this a coordinating conjunction or a subordinating conjunction? I repeat the part of this sentence, day high an der Stroß wunnen. Well, as you can hear, the verb comes here, um, the conjugated verb comes at the end of the sentence, so it is a subordinating conjunction, day, okay? That's in Kammer, day high an der Stroß wunnen. So these, these are the kids uh, who live here in the street. Satz Nummer 2. Ich hoffe, dass die Tvierde an der Vakanz gut geht. Here we have the conjunction dat, and you know that dat is a subordinating conjunction. Why? Well, because again the conjugated verb comes at the end, dat die Tvierde an der Vakanz gut geht. Ich hoffe, dass die Tvierde an der Vakanz gut geht. I hope that the weather will be good in, um, on when we are on vacation. Am letzte Satz, Satz Nummer 3. Er trennt, mir ist kein Ava an der Park laufen. Now this is a tricky one. Er trennt, mir ist kein Ava an der Park laufen. So the conjunction here is me, meaning but. So it is a coordinating conjunction. And now you will tell me, oh yes, but we have the verb at the end of the sentence. Yes, but we have two verbs here. The first verb is me ist gin. Ava an the park laughen. This is to go running. Okay, when you have two verbs in a normal sentence, the, the, the second one comes last. Okay, if we would have uh, taken a subordinating conjunction, for example, that, then it would be that 
uh, us on the park laughing gin. Okay, then the two verbs come at the end. So I hope that this was not too complicated. So I suggest, as always, to listen again to the podcast to get familiar with these uh, word order rules. And uh, in my self-study online course A1 Foundation. So if you subscribe to this course, you will get free access to my um a 10-day course called The Basics of the Luxembourgish Sentence Structure. And this is really a nice um, course that you can complete within 10 days and then you will master the word order rules in Luxembourgish and there's a, a big quiz at the end to test your knowledge. So, ich meine, das ist genug für heute. Ich so ein Merci für die Nullaustrafe wie immer und bis nächsten Donnerstag. Adi! 